Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. The topic of today's discussion is really what is the downside of being in a relationship with a narcissist? I get a number of emails, inquiries, messages on all sorts of different topics. But one of the questions that I, I receive most frequently is people constantly feel like that there's something wrong with them. They're being too sensitive. They're being too needy. Um, they should put up and shut up or they're kind of looking inward to themselves and saying, what do I need to change in order to get along harmoniously with this relationship? And this sort of becomes this global you know, in other words, if I can get along with this person, this narcissist, this person who's controlling, manipulating, perhaps they're abusive, they've said some hurtful things, condescending, this is abuse. And it's very difficult oftentimes for people who are enmeshed in relationships with someone who is psychopathic or narcissistic really to have a very clear perspective and be able to see the forest for the trees. In other words, to be able to validate the fact that this person is no good for you. They are controlling. They're abusive. They're manipulative. They're betraying um, to you. Um, they have betrayal tendencies. They do things behind your back. You catch them, you know, cheating with somebody or doing something that you hitherto had no information about and all of a sudden they're, yeah, oh, I didn't tell you I've signed up for this class. Or, oh, I didn't tell you I quit this job. Or, yeah, I didn't tell you I've got this and this going on. So there's this sort of inclusive or exclusiveness that creates a lot of tension with a narcissist and a psychopath. And I know that these are very different personality types. However, people oftentimes who, and I kind of group really those people who have been at the, at the raw end, the short end of the stick with these types of people because I, I feel what they go through is very similar although there's a, a, a degree of difference in the intensity and severity. However, a common thread, a common de denominator is that the people who are on the supply end, who are in the position of being targeted or scapegoated, or scoped out or a you know a quote-unquote target of their criticism they're being made fun of I mean it's very very childish um, and they get into this trap of basically being nice to this person in order to cover up for their feelings in order to protect others so really being nice to cover up your feelings to protect others. So it begins really in, in the relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath. The only way the relationship can continue is if you disconnect from your feelings, really. There's a dissociation that really tends to happen and a degree of intensity or severity can vary from person to person but when we talk about dissociation it means sort of not being able to own your feelings not being able to own kind of calling somebody out and a need to protect them in other words to be nice to go along with to you know having to be silenced oftentimes because the things that are said or that you expose them are so hurtful and oftentimes so shocking that people are resourceless. They, they don't know how to cope. They don't know how to manage. They don't know how to deal effectively because maybe they've never ex experienced this before. So here comes somebody who you are sort of in a, a relegated to a support or supply position. So when we talk furthermore, you know, about supply, what is that? It's because you are, are a support person to, to the narcissist or the psychopath. There is very little level ground, being level, being able to have a true honest connection with these people because of the persona or facade that they need to maintain. That they are 
you know, the cool girl, the cool guy, they've, you know, they're the charming, handsome guy who's, or the charming, beautiful woman, you know, who kind of prides herself on how she can do one over on men, do one over on women, you know, doesn't matter. There's this feeling that the narcissist and the psychopath have is that they can get away with something that other people cannot. This is known as entitlement. And they think that, you know, everybody should make special accommodations, special adjustments, uh, make, you know, special openings in their schedule, um, you know, do special favors, um, being able to do it for them this time, you know, whether it's asking for a fee to be reversed, uh, for them to not have to go through what everybody else does. In other words, I'm special. I am, ex you know, and, ex and deserve this exclusive treatment. So they're kind of, is like above and beyond the law. And this can either be literally figuratively the law or it can just be the law of, of, of you know, social, social norms. Um, in other words, that you are honest with people, um, that you are respectful, um, that you give another person the chance to be heard. Likewise, that you give yourself or that or others the chance to speak. So the, the problem, once again, kind of circling back in, in terms of being a supply source, and you'll be able to know because people can't, I find that they can't sort of make that determination. They're afraid oftentimes to make that determination for themselves. Um, so it's very important to kind of come, you know, to channels like the Peace and Harmony channel to get validation for your feelings, not only here and from others in the community, but from yourself to validate things for yourself. So if you find yourself in a relationship with someone where you're having to be nice and to cover up your feelings or what you want to say to protect others, then you are putting this other person first above and beyond yourself. This is not required. This is not asked for. This is not what life is asking of you to make yourself the bottom of the list, to make yourself the back seat to, you know, always feel that you must put others first and please others and furthermore be this sort of constant support person. In other words, if you've been really entrenched or ensnared or really steeped in a relationship with these kinds of people, and this isn't your first rodeo, this isn't your first troubling relationship, you're finding that this is kind of re repeating again and again and over and over for yourself, chances are there was somewhere along the line that you learned, maybe in your childhood, maybe from zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, it's different and unique for everybody, but oftentimes if you've seen this repeat over and over and over again, and you're wondering why things aren't changing, oftentimes there's a, a, an earlier relationship dynamic where you learned that in order for the relationship to survive, not thrive, but to survive, to make it through, to get through the day, to get through, you know, the year, to get through your situation, you've had to conceal or shut down or dissociate and dismiss your own feelings in order to appease or please the narcissist or the psychopath. This goes beyond, you know, making basic sacrifices. This is when you literally have to cover up your feelings in order to protect them, to protect, you know, a narcissistic rage outburst. In other words, where you're, you know, narcissistic rage, you will see when, when they're challenged or when things aren't all about them or they're not the only one getting the attention. You know, this, the, the psychopath, you don't get a lot of rage, although they do rage, but you know, the, the supply, if you're in that second fiddle, that second place, that third place, that fifth place, that 10th place, and you find you're always trying to jockey up, you know, on this person's speed dial or, you know, in their viewpoints to get, you know, the, the thank you, 
uh, for everything that you've done for me and that you're having to be overly nice or sugarcoat things or constantly having to support them, compliment them, ask about them, you know, um, and this can be even, you know, if you're going to a party or you're going to a, a baby shower and it's held at this beautiful restaurant and you know, you would, you, you would love to be able to share and then talk about yourself and how's your summer, how's your kids, how's, you know, or, you know, whatever it is, you just want to have general conversation. Um, how are things going? How's your job? How's your place? How's the brother? How's the sister? You want to have just normal, general conversation, have a few laughs, not worry about trying to protect your back. When you're with these people, you'll find that you'll get kind of a tinge in your stomach and there's something about the event or the person that kind of gets the butterflies going but you don't know quite what it is so you might just write it off as oh maybe I'm you know nervous or you know I haven't seen them for a long time or you know they're they're married before me and I'm embarrassed that I'm not married or they're having kids I mean people go through all these judgments and things you know, or, you know, this place is so fancy and, you know, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to feel comfortable there. All these sort of excuses that come up, usually it, it boils right down to the fact that part of you does not feel good enough in that really there's a subconscious feeling that you must constantly, in order to survive in relationships, that you must sort of do this put up and shut up. So you might have learned this earlier in life. You know, do do this for your sister, do this for your brother, do this for your father, do this for your mother, do this, you know, for your friends, you know. So you might have learned early on that this was the way to get by in relationships, was to constantly, you know, fan the flames of other people. So it can be, it can, you know, begin, you know, in one little relationship where you kind of learn that, that dynamic. And then, but then it carries over and then it continues on into other relationships where you're kind of constantly giving yourself the sort of short end of the stick, no credit, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I can't do this. I can't, you know, do adulting. I can't do a new job. Um, I can't do relationships, marriage, whatever it is that, you know, kind of, you know, always seems like you're being weighed against this person, you know, that is a big red flag that you're in a relationship or ha are kind of working along those operating dynamics of someone who is narcissistic or psychopathic. And, you know, um, you know, just put up with it, just be nice, you know, as if there's something wrong with you. So, you know, not only did you learn this, in other words, you learned that in order for the relationship before, you had to constantly compliment them, ask about how they're doing. You know, even if it's a, an open event, you know, let's just say you've got a, a, a baby shower at a beautiful uh, restaurant and, you know, you want to go and talk about, you know, talk about the person who's hosting it or this or that or what have you heard about child raising, there's always going to be this sort of feeling that they're going to, you know, one up everybody and anybody. So there's this one upmanship that you will see in the narcissist. And so early in the relationship with a narcissist, you'll find that, you know, in order for the relationship to go anywhere, you have to go, oh yeah, ooh, ah, you know, and where did you take all your vacations? And where did, you know, and it's always got to be about them because they just have a whole can of stories upon stories upon their conquerors, their achievements, and it's all about them, you know, tap dancing to their own drum, and you have to just basically, you know, more triangle. You've got to hit the triangle, you got to tap the tambourine, whatever it is, you have to just be there to play fiddle for their song, so it can never sort of be about you. So people get very accustomed to things never being about them. You know, oh, you know, and this is what where codependency really begins. In other words, if I can just be nice enough to them, 
if I can just go along with them, if I can just be agreeable, you know, then, and this carries over into your career, you know, um, where you never then be able to take that, the higher position because you can't stand up for yourself and your needs and, you know, it, everything, you just put it back on your shoulders. In other words, it's never, you know, anything wrong with the narcissist. God forbid anybody call them out. And the psychopath, I mean, they're bigger than life. They, you know, can grease through and slide through anything. They never get snagged on anything. They won't certainly get snagged on, on me. That, you know, so there's this sugarcoating feelings too. And then, you know, then there's this feeling of never really knowing yourself or knowing your interests or being able to stick up for yourself or really being able to get into the, you know, not only the, the C word meaning confront, being able to confront people. Hey, that's not nice. Cut it out. Hey, I don't appreciate that. You know, oh, you're making fun of me. Okay. Just, you know, in other words, you can't even joke about it. Um, so I find that people who have really been steeped in that supply role where they've been, you know, it's very difficult for them to be able to have statements that they can go to in order to communicate, hey, I don't like what's going on. In other words, over, you know, hey, you know, cut that out, you know, when they're making fun of you. Hey, you know, you know, like you've never been in this position before. Like you've never had a first boyfriend. Like you've never made, you know, missed an, uh, a train flight or you've never, you know, uh, missed the, you've never been late before. You've never made a, a bad decision. You've never been nervous. You know, in other words, they're, they're um, sort of uh, bloating out things. They're, they're, high, they're uh, overreacting. They have this grandiosity. So the grandiosity of a narcissist is really kind of what, what puts people and pegs people down. So you have to feel like you're always walking in their shadow. You know, that ain't nice. In other words, they're not sharing. Um, you know, oh, you know, and so being able to confront, in other words, to call people out, not to, and this is a very important skill to do respectfully. Self-esteem, <coughs> which is so important, which is valuing yourself and respecting yourself to know your feelings and to communicate them in a way that's respectful to others, knowing your own value, and it doesn't need to have any competition, it just is. It's, <coughs> excuse me, um, it becomes really a situation where you're not able to confront. Um, oftentimes people who are in this position, they're very, they're very uncomfortable sort of putting people in their place, even if it's little things. Even if, if someone is joking about you, ha ha, you know, oh yeah, um, yeah, like you've, you know, you know, you want to, you want to, uh, strangle me or you want to make fun of me. Like you've never been nervous. Um, oh, you want to make fun of me. You've never, uh, been late. I mean, you know, but you have to deliver it in a way that is on par with an indifference. So, and, and I definitely recommend that if someone is abusive, that you walk away you you know you, you no longer talk to this person and so you know it's kind of like leave it on a high note in other words once you've sort of exposed the narcissist they are not in your best interests the situation has evolved where you're now always having to protect other people's feelings and have a social anxiety now you find your people pleasing you're you know, you have to, to smile all the time. You have to always be super polite. Um, everybody else comes first. You're always considering other people's needs. You, you're, you, you've, you've done this to such a degree that you've dissociated with your own needs, your own interests, your own, you know, social standing. Um, you find it very difficult to speak up. Um, you just put up and shut up way too much. You don't have 
ways to be assertive. Assertiveness is a huge, huge skill. And assertive doesn't mean aggressive or hostile or, you know, uh, selfish. Assertive means being able to put forth an opinion, a viewpoint, make a statement, and being able to hear other people and being able to have that discourse back and forth and being able to have a boundary, you know, of, of what you will tolerate and where you will not tolerate as well as a standard. And when that's bypassed, you know what that is. So you need to have those in place. In other words, if someone is making fun of you, ridiculing you, criticizing you, calling you names, um, ignoring you, giving you weird looks, weird body language that you are not comfortable with. And if you can't say, hey, can you back it up? Um, you know, you know, you're, you're kind of uh, crouching in on my space. I need a little space here. Um, can you, um, you know, uh, you know, yeah, we've heard, I, I think we, I think we, you know, we've, we've covered several of your vacations. You know, I feel like I've, I've traveled around the world just listening to you, you know, um, and I feel like I've, you know, um, you know, I've, I've been some places, maybe it was a different experience, you know, and then being able to kind of get your foot in, um, in the conversation. So when you find that you're, if you're constantly being overrided, your needs aren't being respected. There, in other, I mean, it's, it should be very clear, but people get into this Mother Teresa, this, um, you know, Gandhi, uh, you know, syndrome, where it's just like, they're just gonna sacrifice all of their needs, and as long as other people's needs are getting met, that that's good enough. Well, that's not good enough because you're the most important person. Your needs need to be able to be front and center, and you need to be able to center yourself on, on, on what you can declare and what you will tolerate and what you will not, and being able to catch it and being able to communicate it. So... Being so nice, um, this creates more problems for yourselves. But more, more importantly, is that if you found that you're, you can't really feel like yourself, you have to, uh, you have to constantly adapt and adjust to others. You have to explain and justify yourself. Um, then you know, then you're in a, a state of tension, and you're having to be a counterforce to the force of their personality. So there's no personal empowerment, personal empowerment. So it's very important that number one, that you, you, you leave abusive relationships. You leave, you walk away from, you no longer talk to those people who are abusive. Well, it's very tough if you're 16 and these are your parents, um, and I mean, you know, or even if, you know, if you're, if you're 10 and these are your parents, or if these are people who you're living with or financially dependent, you can be married to these people and, 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 or living with and find out, you know, I really need to get out of here. I need to scram, scram like, but, you know, getting into that assertiveness is so important. And then to stop covering up your feelings. Stop covering up your feelings. But the problem is people want to kind of pounce and, you know, and sort of confront without feeling that sort of modulation of being able to come at it cool, calm, and collected and being articulated. In other words, I've, I've had, you know, they get to that point where it's so bottled up that things aren't going to come out the right way. I've had it, you know, this has been going on way too long. I'm, you know, sick of constantly hearing about you and your day and it's never about anybody or anything else and that, you know, and then you lose it or I'm so sick of you always talking about your friends. You you know, you never want to hear about my day or my friends or my side of the family and it's always this, you know, so people wait so long, you know, and they suffer. Um, and so, of course, you're going to be fueled up, jazzed up, you know, jazzed up sideways, juiced up, and it can come with a lot of anger. And um, so you want to really look at that and then work through that 
sort of within yourself. So in the privacy of these videos, you you have to kind of look at, um, you know, really, if you're if you're angry that you've been so violated, you have to become accountable to yourself. Number one and stop covering up your feelings. You know, um, in other words, you know, I feel like every time you, you come in the room, like your voice is, is, is like super loud and I can't get a word in, or I feel like I'm just sort of waffled over. You know, being able to speak your fears. David Sandler, um, you have to be able to speak your fears. You know, I feel like, um, you know, if, you know, speaking your fears, I feel like you guys are just not interested in my opinion. You know, I really, I really don't like to talk about this topic. It's just so negative. You know, making, stating your feelings, you know, um, exactly how you feel. So if it's going to be this big can of worms, you know, do you want to do that at a baby shower? Do you want to do that at a restaurant? You know, do you want to do that in, in the, ch you know, the church lobby? You know, there's a time and a place. Um, and so you need to be accountable to yourself. It's no fun being in a source of supply to a narcissist or a psychopath. And furthermore, when people do not feel that they kind of know their interests or kind of know their strengths, they don't know, they're out of touch with it, oftentimes it's because They've had to put others front and center for so long that they can't sort of get into their own identity outside of that of being a victim as defined by the standards and conforming to the values of others without knowing what their what their what theirs are, what their own values are, and being able to speak it, live it, articulate it, do it, get into action, translate it into action. So people feel like, you know, years and decades of their life are like worn away while going, you know, living under the thumb of the, these people um, because they're always trying to protect the narcissist. To some, and, and for a lot of people, this is very difficult. So you have to be able to stop protecting the narcissist and the psychopath. And a good first step is to say, you know what, they're big enough, they're going to have to protect themselves. They're, you know, they're big enough now, they're going to have to be able to handle other people speaking up. They're going to have, you know, and if you're afraid of the retaliation, then you need to address that within yourself and being able to handle no matter what occurs, you have to become detached from the outcome. So if they, you know, in other words, I'm not going to take their bait. If they begin yelling and screaming, you know, I'm, I'm not here to lose composure. I'm not here to cause a fight. This is how I feel and this is how it is. You know, and this this is the this is the boundary and this is the standard. Being able to use some more terminology like that so they know what you're talking about. Um, and to look at that ten, ten, <coughs> excuse me, that tendency um, because to feel like yourself, you need to be become accountable to yourself and being able to stick up for your own needs. Even if you haven't had a good role model for how to do this, you need to identify a role model and being able to get yourself into situations where you can become more, you know, exemplifying, you know, exemplify and living that positive new identity, living those interests, those, you know, being able to express yourself. People become um, so, you know, uh, they, they become so resolved that they're, it's never going to change, that they become so um, shut down and they become so heartbroken. They become sort of a defeated attitude. They begin to isolate, become disempowered. So this then becomes self-avoidance. So you need to become self-embracing, self-validating, and identify your needs and being able to really speak them. You know, I need, I need to be able to speak. And, be, you know, and being able to assert that within yourself first so you can communicate it to others.
so you can communicate it to others as well. And that's why people feel that they're so far short of their part potential because there's this big gap, there's this big gap, there's this big rift in between where they feel that they should be and where they are. It's because they haven't been able to, you know, level that out. In other words, they know that their potential is such, but yet there's this big gap, oftentimes of inexperience or lack of experience. So be, be able to unstuff your feelings. Being able to stop others from taking everything away from you. Stop giving your power away to others. I mean, this is just, I'm, I'm going to start taking a little bit of notes for some touch points on some of our topics because I think it's so important um, that, you know, you get out of this suffering. Um, you are not called to the relationship to suffer. You are called to the relationship to grow and to have joy and bliss and discovery and be connected and have things work in your favor and have you know, and manifest all the good that you've been dedicated and working towards, but you need to follow through. You need to enforce this for yourself. You need to be able to write some things down. You need to write your, your needs down. In fact, right now, as you're listening to this video, if there's some needs that you haven't addressed, begin to write them down, begin to embrace them. These are your marching orders. You need to be able to, you know, Give yourself like a little bit of a self syllabus so you have something to go with and being able to follow through and identify your needs and then satisfy them. But begin with communication with self and become accountable to self and don't worry about being accountable to a narcissist or a psychopath. Being accountable to yourself, you are number one. You are the one who's important here. You got this, you can do it. It's your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today, and I hope these videos help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out.